Wagwan viewers and subs, welcome back to class. Thank you for tuning in. In today's video, guys, we have a few dents on this quarter panel here. See, so we have one over here. So two in total and then some scratches. So I know a lot of you guys have been asking for how you repair in the repair video. So we're gonna try to make the best use of these two dents to teach you um, anything that you might have missed or what, what else you need to know. Now to get started on these dents, we're going to be using the Ultra Thing Master. This is a glue pulling kit. Let me open it up and show you what's inside. So inside guys, you have a variety of different size and shapes of pulling tabs. Right, these one doesn't come with this kit. These ones are from a different kit, but the blue ones belongs to this kit. So you wanna use the shape, the size that best fits your dent, okay? And over here, we have the glue. That's what you put into the heat gun. It gets hot, comes out like liquid. I'll show you exactly how to do it. And he has tools here that you can use to tap down some high spots. This is the puller. So you're gonna see how I use this to pull up the dent. And this one's also is a puller that you can use to remove, to, to pull out the dent. And here's another one. Let's get started. Now, the first thing you wanna do is clean the surface, otherwise the glue will not stick. Now, once the gun is hot, this one doesn't use a plug. It plugs into the lighter hole and it comes out like liquid and then you will just stick it right onto the dent and remember you can use different size and shapes that fits the dent you're using best right so i'm using the blue one and i'm using the purple one remember they're both from a different kit and i'll show you the difference one is better than the other now once you glue it on there let it dry for a little while and uh, try to slide it off now you realize what happened it just pops right off no resistance at all now go over here to the blue one, which is the better one, it's stronger. And see how I have multiple pulls here. I can pull it, pull it, pull it, until I get it to where I want it to be. Now, once you finish pulling, you can use some brake cleaner and spray it on there and then use this tool that also comes in the kit and pry it right off. Now I won't be finishing these dents completely. I won't pull them all the way out because I want you guys to get some of the bodywork side of this repair. So here is how I got it up. I didn't get it all the way up because we're gonna do some bodywork. Now these are tiny dents that you can fill with body filler and not worry about it cracking or anything like that. I had placed one more on here because I didn't get a good pull on the first one. So I put one more on here just to get this spot a little bit higher. Okay, now we're moving on to the other fun part. Now the first thing I do is I get a block with 180 and I block down the area. Once you block the area, this will highlight that dent where you can better see it and know exactly where you need to put your body filler. And just by blocking it, guys, it looks like we already started the repair with Bondo, right? It looks just so small now. All we gotta do is fill that with one to two coats of body filler, and I'll show you exactly how to do it without killing yourself, spending a whole hour doing something that should be done in 15 minutes. Now to get the bundle started, I'm sanding the surrounding area with some 180 grit sandpaper. This way I can make sure that I have proper adhesion. You don't wanna apply body filler on over clear coat or an unsanded area, otherwise it will not be sticking. I'll be using the Rage brand body filler. Now, if, you, if your body filler looks too blue like this, it probably means you have too much hardener and it can cause pinholes. And if it's too light or too gray, it probably means you don't have enough hardener, which can also cause pinholes with ear pockets. 
And once you mix up your body filler, make sure that it's uniform. It should be one color. It should not be two color before you apply it on there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply the body filler exactly into that dent. I don't wanna go any further just yet. Just like when I'm painting, the first thing I like to do, I like to cover, get some coverage in the repaired area before I actually start painting the whole thing, right? that gives me that it actually saves time right and it gives you a smoother finish in the end believe it or not now it doesn't matter how you do your work just make sure you get the same result in the end this here is a cheese grater it's very old school this is one of the things i learned on when i was starting out in this field it is a very good tool to use it saves you a lot of time now the trick with this is you want to make sure that you use it while the body filler that you applied is semi hard. Now, if you have it dry like I have it here, you notice that it's bar it barely want to cut anything. You have to make sure that it's semi hard to get the best use out of it. Now, here's another important step. When you're blocking your body filler, make sure you're using a hard block. There is soft black that you can use for wet sanding and buffing, or even just buffing for a blend or paint. But you want to use a hard block. Now, I could use a smaller one, couldn't find it, so I decided to go with this big one. So what you want to do is block in different direction. Don't block in the same direction. That way, you don't eat up the surrounding areas, and then it starts to get wavy. So if you do it my way, guys, I promise you two to three coats of body filler and you're done. Now, guys, notice how the body filler stayed exactly where it's needed, but it's not quite done yet. It's still uneven. We need to get some more body filler on here to make it straight and even. I'm mixing up some more body filler. This is the glaze body filler, the 3M glaze body filler. It's not a lot of body to it. It's lightweight body filler. This is good for the finishing touch with your bodywork. It's easy to sand and it's easy to apply. Now I'm gonna go a little bit further than I did with the first coating of body filler because now I need to get the body work straight and sand it out even. <laughs> Now, for those of you who don't know what you're looking for when you're finishing up your body filler, it should look like this. It should look faded and feathered out on the edge. This area is good, but it needs more sanding. Definitely this area. That's how you want to get your body filler faded out um, along with making sure that it's um, straight and not wavy.
And now to get this ready for primer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use 320 to refine those heavy 180 scratches. Now on a silver metallic, you can see those sand scratches a lot easier than you would in solid colors such as, or even pearl colors like white or black. It hides um, the scratches. However, in these colors, you're gonna notice it right away. So I'm gonna refine it again after I use the 320 with 400. You can go up to 600 if you like before you prime. And now we're gonna go ahead and mask up the car. Bat mask in here. We don't need anything fancy because we're gonna just prime, all right? I'm gonna show you guys how to tape it for paint. You can be a bit more fancy there, but for primer, you don't necessarily have to. What you don't wanna do is, you don't wanna create any hard lines when you tape. So you can use the reverse masking to get a soft edge because obviously we're not gonna prime this whole panel. We just wanna prime this little area that we did our body work in. Bam, we're all done with the masking. It should look something like this. You don't wanna go too far. You don't wanna have your masking paper too close because you don't want any hard lines because that could show up in the finished paint job because you didn't sand it out or block it out properly. You wanna make sure that you get good coverage on all those areas with the burn through, the sand scratches, and your body filler. You need about two to three coats and you're good. This is the Tetna uh, primer gun, uh, 1.7 tip, 15 to 18 PSI. And here my primer is all done and ready for sanding after drying for an hour. And guys, just a quick tip. Once you finish priming, remove the mask and paper. Don't wait till it dries. And let's get right down to it now. We're moving on to the next step. Now we're getting closer and closer to getting the car painted. Now, in the areas that I do body work, I like to block the primer just to make sure that everything is nice and straight. I don't need any surprises. Now, you can use guide coat to sand and block the body filler just to make sure that you're seeing everything and you didn't miss anything. The guide coat is gonna show you the high spots or the low spots or any imperfection, making sure that you sand that body filler completely smooth because without prepping it right, this step is super important. If you don't prep it good, you're not gonna get a good finish or you're gonna spend a lot of time in the paint booth trying to fix um, minor imperfections. I'm blocking this down with 400 grit sandpaper. And after I finish with the 400 grit, I'll go over it with 400 on the DA, 600 and finish up with 800 grit. And this means the whole panel, this whole quarter panel, I'm going to sand it down, finish in with 800 grit sandpaper. All right, guys, so once you're done prepping and cleaning, by the time the car reaches in the booth, it should look something like this. Nice and clean, free of dust. Now we're gonna get it masked. Now, there's different techniques that you can use. I find this to be one of the best techniques for, for this area specifically so bat masking bat masking means that the glue side of the tape will be left exposed now that i laid some tape in there i can go ahead and close the tailgate the mission is to keep the tape away from the area that i'm about to paint so you get some tape on there and you kind of pull it away from the panel. 
So you want it to look something like this. Now we can continue. You can go ahead and do back masking under here or you can tape it underneath like this. It's really up to you guys. Just make sure that you tape it in a way that once you go to take to remove the masking, you don't bridge it and then pull off the paint that you just laid down. That's not gonna be good. You're gonna end up respraying. So this is how it looks under here, away from the edge, away from the edge of the panel. You know, you wanna keep it as deep as possible. That way you eliminate all chances of bridging. There is many different ways to go about taping a car. Taping is a skill. A lot of people take great pride in how they mask up their cars. You can put the tape underneath. You'll get a nice clean look here without any lines. It really doesn't matter if you wanna do it this way because a molding covers this anyway. However, in this case, if I put the tape back here, I can still cover those holes because sometimes you wanna make sure that the holes are covered to prevent any form of overspray getting everywhere and up into the car. And just like that, we're making good progress. Now you have to be able to work smart because you don't wanna tape off this door and close it right before you secure these area. You gotta put something in between the door here so that the overspray doesn't get in. Same thing in here. Try to get my tape as deep as possible in there. And sometimes when you're taping, if you're not sure um, just, just how much um, room you're gonna need or how much need to be covered with paint and clear, you just look at the other side. Now you can run some foam tape in here, guys. It's all up to you, but bat masking do just fine every time. And also, make sure you know what the paint code is before you, you finish masking. So paint code on Acura vehicles is usually in this area. If it's on a Subaru, it might be on the opposite side. BMW, you know, it could be in the trunk or underneath the hood, or it could be right here too. German have their stuff all over the place. Make sure you have clean hands while you're taping, guys, because the less grease, the less oil, the better. And get some tape up here on the top. This area here, you can apply the foam tape or you can use the smaller tape and do bat mask i find that using this actually gives me a lot less work um smoothing out these uh, th the edges from the foam tape this one gives you a cleaner line just like up here once i pull this off i don't have to clean anything it's already clean it gets a clean finish from doing that now you have to be careful with this, you know, you're still going to have to pull it back a little, pull it off of the edge, because if you don't, that's going to be a bridging problem. So we don't want that. You want to be patient, take the necessary steps, see something you don't like or something you know is not going to be good. You just go ahead and fix it. Just like your body work. If you feel something, you're probably going to see something. So you just go ahead and take care of it. So now I close the door. I will secure that tape once again, pulling it away from the panel. Just like that. See, got the tape off the hedge, nice and tight, no overspray getting through. As for the gas tank, I will use the foam tape. The best thing you could possibly do is remove the whole thing but i'm not getting paid for that here's another thing or another idea what you're really trying to protect in here guys because in here is already dry all right whenever you see a quarter panel it always a little dry it's never like glossy like the outside because no one is really um paying attention to that so if you want, you can put the tape inside 
and bat mask it or you can put it like this because the main thing to um to protect in here is the black pieces here you don't want to get any paint on them so when you close it it won't be any line but <clears throat> then you have your protection inside and you can actually get some paint or some clear even deeper inside however i'm gonna go ahead and use the foam tape done with the masking now we're moving on into the painting realm now what we're gonna do before we start painting is give this one final clean before painting you don't want any contamination or you don't want your paint to react once you start to paint so you have to make sure that the panel is properly cleaned I use a water base and a solvent based cleaner with these microfiber towels to make sure I get a good clean And there it is guys, the end result. There's a lot of time and work that goes into one single paint job and this is just a panel. Just imagine an entire car. So when you give a customer your price, stick with it. If they don't like it, they can find somewhere else to go. And customers, you can see just how much work goes into one single paint job. And you want your car to look good, you gotta pay. So I know you guys learned a lot today. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Until next time, class dismissed.